What are you talking about metallic jackets, Jenna? Oh, I, I literally just finished watching this Crave special and you guys walked on and the first thing in my head I said to myself was metallic matching jackets. And then I didn't think you were going to give us an explanation, but then you did and I was pretty excited about it. But I'm sad that you don't have them with you in Quebec. You're in Quebec, right? Yeah, we left New York uh, at the end of March um, due to uh, the pandemic, and we should have brought those as you know essential in our escape. But we, oh, yeah. we left behind, which was which was stupid in retrospect. Yes, I think we wore them so much right before the special <laughs> and right after doing shows and traveling that we we're just like they need a break. Did we ret we retired them like you know Michael Jordan and. What was it number 23? He retired it but brought it back, which we'll do with the metallic yeah, that's jackets. What, yeah, so when just... everybody when yeah, when we get our ESPN special. Well, <laughs> under quarantine, you really should change them to matching velour tracksuits. That's true. I'm so down. She's, Anything yeah. matching, I love. I mean, I started that whole thing. She always rolls her eyes when I want us to like dress the same, but in the end it pays off. Yeah, that was one of your stylistic choices, For sure. branding choices. I, I wanted to remain my own person. Um, she likes to work on the content of the special, and I just work on the outfits. That's basically our roles. You're like a real gay couple. Imagine that. Oh, my God. So if anybody uh, doesn't know who we're talking to, then, you know, go watch the special because you need to know these two. Our guests on today's episode of Cocktails, Comedians, and Quarantine are basically the modern-day odd couple. That's how I describe you guys because... One of them is Jewish, the other one is Palestinian, and they're married lesbians together. It's shocking. You may have seen them on Just for Laughs, The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, even their very own Crave special that we're talking about called The El Solomons, A Marriage of Convenience. So uh, please welcome for the very first time on our podcast, Jess Solomon and Iman El Husseini. Woo! <laughs> the crowd goes wild. Oh, yeah. Sit down, yeah. <laughs> and they do go wild, because I've been at the club when these two are on stage, and uh, they just love you. The, the merch flies off that little table by the door. <laughs> we should sell matching metallic jackets. Uh, yes, yeah, great yeah, idea. Maybe and now. We definitely yeah. should get one for our new puppy, which yeah. we'll get into, I'm sure. You might hear a squeaky phone going off in the background. That's is what she that right is. there? Get her. Show. Let's see. Esther, honey, come She's here. She's so depressed today because she played with another dog yesterday for like the first time during isolation and she's such a social thing and that dog left and now she's been like <gasps> barely anything yeah Esther. that's not a dog that's a living breathing stuffed animal yeah, <laughs> she really is. she's a real so lover yeah, we did get her um, before the pandemic, which I, I, I'm trying to explain to her because there's a lot of pandemic puppies. But when she's old enough, we're going to show her the adoption paper so she can she can see that she was wanted. Hey, better get a, a puppy than a kid during this crap. Can you imagine all the messed up kids that are going to grow up like with no human contact? Like, don't touch me, you know? Yeah, it's Not pretty good. nuts. And I... Uh, the parents, like, I mean, the Zoom calls with my friends that are homeschooling and working from home, it's, I mean, like, I'm a mom too, of course, but, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's not the same, I guess. Well, you know, you had an interesting Facebook status, Jess, now that you're a dog mom, she keeps pulling you into the woods, and, uh, <laughs> you know, I expect to find a hot date in the woods, you expect to find a dead body? Well, you know, I'm a white woman walking in the woods. Uh, I'm normally in a big city, but now we're in, in the woods of Quebec, and this dog wants to explore and eat deer poop, and I don't know what. And uh, and that's every episode of Law & Order. I think it's like a white woman generally jogging. I'm not really jogging. More slowly walking, being pulled by a seven-pound, you know, stuffed animal, but still. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just waiting to come across a body. I'm very worried. And the body is usually a woman of color. Usually. So. <laughs> Here we are working together. If you two, yeah, if you two spend enough time in quarantine, I'm sure that will be the circumstance at one point. <laughs> Esther, we were trying to hide her. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I, I was going to say, you'll be the, the finder and the uh, the killer. Anyway, I don't know what I'm saying. Um, yeah. That's the phone call where you're like, I just, I don't know what happened. It definitely wasn't me that killed my spouse. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, <laughs> there's a lot more people thinking about that quarantine together, uh, especially if you're not around a lot of other people, which are you guys in some like weird French village right now? 
Well, the Weird French Village is at least like 20 minutes from here. We're really not near, like the closest town is 20 minutes away and it's, and we're from Montreal and we'd never heard of it before. Um, I don't even think it has too much going on even in regular times from what I can tell. Yeah, I don't know if it's a new, new, I don't know. A new town? A new town or something. It's basically it's a Provigo with the SAQ inside. Right. And then there's um, a pharmacy and an Ultramar gas station with a dip. I think that's the whole thing. And a boulangerie. Yeah. That's the whole, maybe Is a, that a bakery? A bakery. Okay, bakery. Good. So, okay, well, let's go back. Tell us the story of how you ended up there, because you guys live in New York City. So how did you end up? Were you on tour? Or, like, why are you in Quebec in the first place when all this hit? We wanted to stay in New York. Initially, that was the plan. We We were were in New York when it hit, yeah. Yeah, so we've been in New York for four years, and we wanted to be true New Yorkers and stay and, you know... (laughs) Yeah, I was, the, at the beginning, I was very much like, of course, New York is the epicenter of COVID. It's the epicenter for everything, you losers. <laughs> and then I was like, we should get out of here. Yeah, I think it's just the politics like really drove us nuts. And just seeing like Andrew Cuomo on a daily basis beg for medical supplies. I'm like, God forbid one of us gets sick. It's actually over. I don't want to die this way. So let's go back to Canada. Which way do you want to die? I don't know. It has to be like better than just like in the in emergency the room. <laughs> <laughs> I want a better story. Yeah. You know? Maybe murdered by your wife in the woods. Yeah. So much better yeah. than, yeah. Look, not I, having a respirator. Yeah. I, I was already quarantining in Brooklyn. Iman was still in Toronto doing the last weekend of shows at Yuck Yes. It was still like, hadn't sheltered in it, place yet. Yeah. So you started because in New, it hit New York before. I just thought that I had a chance to like do my shows in Toronto go to my favorite restaurants, just, you know, basically do last call before going back to New York and quarantining. Meanwhile, she's like ready to file divorce papers because she thinks I'm bringing back COVID and I'm going to kill the whole family. No, I mean, literally she's selfies in rest. Like she's like, oh my God, look how packed there's a line around the block. I've always wanted to go to this place. It's so hard to get into. And she's, she's treating it like last call, which is literally when all the disease happens. I'm like, please do not bring already your, like just okay, do your show. And then otherwise. My shows weren't getting canceled. So I thought, you know, I could still like live my life. You know what I mean? But then the last two shows got canceled and I, had a sore throat from waiting in line to get into the restaurant. And- Wait a minute. The shows the weekend of the March 13th, were that was that the week? Did they get canceled? Because, okay, I don't know if you know this, but I was going to open for you that weekend in Toronto, but oh. I was such a wimp, and I know the show must go on, but I'm not willing to die, that I canceled it. I'm like, I'm not coming, Howard. And um, he was like, I understand it's okay, but I wondered if the shows still happened. So all Wait, my no, shows in Toronto, happened. though, not in Ottawa. Yeah, in Toronto. Yeah, it was going to be in Toronto. Oh, right. oh okay, okay. Oh, because you said Howard. I got confused. Okay, I know, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, you were, they shouldn't have been happening at that point. You know, none of the, everything should have shut down like a couple weeks in general everywhere before. But, you know, we didn't know. The only person that seemed to know anything was Iman's father. My dad knew from the beginning. Like in yeah. January, he was warning us against traveling. And we're like, okay, okay, relax. He's just traumatized because he's been through war. You know, yeah. that's what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and in Montreal? He's in Montreal, yeah. And th- th- shit's been pretty real in Montreal lately, too. So terrible. I know. Yeah. We left one epicenter to the other. That's yeah. what we do. We like to be in hot spots. <laughs> How are people welcoming you in this small Quebec town? Have you made any friends? <laughs> I think we all laugh because we know the answer. <laughs> yeah. We, when we, when we, we left, and we left New York even like after we should have, we should have left earlier, but like, I, like we really thought we would just like wait it out. And then it, and then it like, you know, it started getting super serious, obviously. Um, and uh, we just made the call to leave. And then, yeah, coming here, we rented a place like the last day that rentals were allowed, long-term rentals. And um, we're in this, it's really beautiful where we are for sure. We're lucky to be here. But when we got here, the guy we rented from had to like let people know and they were not, pleased because I mean already they weren't excited with people from Montreal coming up north and they block you know police block roads but coming from New York is just like you're a walking COVID ball you know with all of the (laughs) things coming out and uh yeah they weren't pleased and it wasn't even because I'm an Anglo and Iman's an immigrant it was uh (laughs) 
it, it was, was terrible yeah. too because we had our car had you know it's a rental from the state so it had an american license plate oh, right. i mean it was just it was terrible yeah so we did have um we did have a police stop by probably because we had that indiana plate in the driveway that's what he noticed yeah or somebody called the cops on us or, honestly. or yeah some we people were upset when i wrote posted on facebook that we that we had left New York and come to Quebec. Uh, a couple of people were. Although we were doing it in like such a cautious we way. We were, but you know. still, you know. So yeah. when you got this backlash, Iman, is that when you started collecting sticks by the front door to use as like shanks? <laughs> no, that was a scary situation. So the time, well, the first two weeks, I was like, no one will like, cause you know, every coming from the city, like any noise at night, we would, we were panicked that it was going to be a murderer. But I was like, well, at least the first two weeks, they know they they won't come near us because maybe we have COVID. <laughs> so that was, I thought we need some other weaponry. No, totally. And I'm like, I'm somebody I need, I could only fall asleep hearing sirens and honking outside. That's how I find pe peaceful sleep. <laughs> complete silence really freaks me out, especially the first night that we got here. Jess was having a complete meltdown. I fell asleep right away. I was so exhausted from the drive and she barely let me eat the whole time. <laughs> so we get here, I fall, I pass out deep sleep so good but i wake up to her at like two o'clock in the morning crying updating her facebook status about how depressed she is she left new york <laughs> so now i have to cover her for like an hour <laughs> isn't that what social media is for don't you just you know cry and and unload on there that's what facebook is well whatever she unloaded kept me up now for the next two hours while she's sound asleep because she just finished crying and writing this yeah, it was emotional um <laughs> i was emotional about leaving i know i did not care until uh i mean you were sad leaving new york for sure well i just i was just like, like fuck the was, stage yeah <laughs> let's get the hell out of here we're so lucky to be canadian you cried like four weeks later that's it, it hit me <laughs> later it hit me later watching an episode of modern love you know how they're based in new york city anyway yeah. so seeing new york with the again the honking and the sirens and the cabs and people swearing at each other that's when i got emotional you can easily go back to montreal if that's what you miss <laughs> the honking and the swearing at each other that's true. That's we, true. we may uh go back to montreal eventually i don't know what we're gonna do i right now our plan is to go back to new york at some point um maybe august we'll we'll see how we'll see how things go i'm watching uh hanging back and watching what happens as things reopen uh you know i um a part of me feels like if we're going to go back to a, a city with covid we might as well go back to new york but um just most of our stuff right there well, our, yeah, we our just apartment. left with like we, our, our jackets each. our metallic jackets right are there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> i hope they're okay Okay, so Iman, what happened to cause you to start collecting sticks? I'm, I'm okay, stuck on this. Right. So, uh, again, we're in the middle of nowhere. I'm, I'm Nobody's really. <laughs> you're going to show them the stick? Yeah, yeah go get uh, them. In the middle of nowhere, and all of a sudden, I'm tanning outside. Any, like, ray of sunshine, I'm outside trying to tan. That's the most important thing for me. It's my passion is to tan in life. But then I hear, like, these two men walking over to where I was tanning. And they're just like these random guys who looked <laughs> terrifying. There's the they stick. Really terrifying. You didn't they're even pile the lens down. <laughs> it's the, they need a little bit of work. <laughs> no, they're pointy. You know, they're no. like they're like s'mores sticks. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't completely lose my mind because we're not in the states, but they look like scary, hickish. Redneck, red Canadian, Nike. red Nike. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, I was completely worried, and I just found it weird that they would like come down on private property. Our car is in the driveway, you know. Anyway, so I'm like, they're coming back to murder us. It's our, and our two weeks had just finished, so we quarantined. Everybody knows that we were done. We've quarantined for they the 14 were, days. We're, we're healthy. To, yeah. They came to see that we're healthy. Yeah. I'm tanning. They're coming to murder us. Mm -hmm. So I had to find uh, mm -hmm. weapons. So I found those uh, sticks. There's also a plastic shovel still by the bed. Um, <laughs> it's not even metal. <laughs> yeah, I was hoping that the Indiana plates might, I mean, they don't know we don't have guns. You know, we could, maybe. Anyway, I was they were scary and it's been, and you know, the police are like a good 30 minutes away, best case scenario. So I love how we all go to um, serial killers. Everything in life is serial killer. They probably just were like, Oh, look at these two hot chicks. Let's go see, you know, rednecks. They probably don't get a lot of choice out there barking up the wrong tree. I know, but a for effort. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
also them being interested in us sexually was a was a scary prospect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess so. I didn't think of that. It's been a while for me. <laughs> <laughs> are you are you guys both on your own in quarantine? I left Ottawa at the beginning, so I've been in Vancouver now for two months with my parents. I figured, why not quarantine down by the ocean instead of downtown Ottawa by myself? So I'll be back on Saturday. But I'm scared about the whole traveling thing, too, because you mentioned, like, do I tell people I'm traveling? Because then you get the travel shamed. You're traveling back to Ottawa on Saturday? Yeah. Oh, wow. So you, we could fly like, now? On What's a plane happening? Or? You can fly domestically. Yeah, you're allowed to fly domestically. It's just the international, the borders are closed. Right. Good for you. No, I mean, I feel like do it. Everybody's taking precaution, you know, and it's not, again, it's not America. So I feel like. I, I hope there's just not a lot of people on the plane, you know, like I hope they spread us out. I got my mask. I got my wipes, That's wipe good. my whole body down every 10 minutes, you know. We'll and I'm pretty good. sure they're not like overselling the flights like they usually do. So that's good. That's what they say. Yeah. You know they're yeah, shady. He's pretty upset at you, actually. Yeah. <laughs> he looks get, he looks he looks pissed that you're taking a flight. <laughs> well, guess who has to pick her up at the airport? Ah! <laughs> we'll see. We'll both be in masks. It'll be fine. We'll get through it. And if not, maybe this will be our last episode. <laughs> Are you like Jesse? Are you day? Are you like online uh, quarantine? Oh, you know it. Yeah, yeah. I, and I'm I'm ready to break free. I'm I'm done with this. I really am finished. You probably haven't heard, but there's been an ongoing topic on our podcast where I've been chatting with this guy who wants to come masturbate at my window, and like just and like watch me do it on the bed, right? Like COVID hookups. But I haven't done it yet. I keep thinking it's weird. But as the weeks go by, I'm like. Hmm, I'm more into this idea. Why not just uh, Skype? Yeah, but yeah, I, yeah, okay. I haven't tried that like this with my, I always, we have done that with the Snapchat video, but then you're holding your phone like in weird positions and it's just, you get a stomach roll in that doesn't look right and it's not good. Yeah. Do you have a ring light? <laughs> you bet I do. <laughs> so <laughs> you, you can use that in other places than other than your face, Jesse. I sh yeah, yeah. But some some places are meant to be dark, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of sex, is your marriage heating up or cooling down? Because, you know, now they're saying this baby boom everybody thought was coming at the beginning ain't coming because married couples are not having sex. In fact, I think I saw a status, another Jess status said, you were about to kill Iman just for saying good morning? Oh, well, you know, that that was one of my rare uh, sports related tweets because we've been um, we've been watching The Last Dance, which is the Michael Jordan documentary. And um, he has a very he's, he's very competitive. And he I mean, if anyone slightly crosses him, he's like even just says like, hello, good game. You know, the guy is like ready to, uh, well, he understands and, uh, that he understands the meaning under it. Like, good game, Mike. The guy was making fun of him, so he's like, "I'm gonna destroy him." Now. And he did, and he destroyed him and the game. And uh, and so, yes, th that was a reference to uh, the Michael Jordan documentary. Oh, see, it went right <laughs> over my head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, because I was in a long relationship, and I totally know what you mean. Like, where if you're just chilling on your couch and like, or you're pissed off on Facebook, and your spouse comes by and they're like, "Good morning, Jess," you'd be like the fuck is that that's what i thought it was I like that it worked uh for you with or without the documentary reference and it could just easily be like i could murder my wife in quarantine yeah uh, we we honestly the main fights that we've had have been around um iman like on the way here wanting up. okay wanting to well, i've always felt that her eating was going to kill us one day um, <laughs> because like whether we've missed flights because she had to stop and get food um, in the airport or on the way to the airport. And we're not the kind of people that leave a lot of time for that going to like to sketchy places on the road because she saw it on, you know, Guy Fieri's show. I love food. I love food. And, and then she, on does, the way she does here, not respect my passion. Um, then uh, obviously hitting like every restaurant in Toronto, last call style while I was in quarantine in Brooklyn. And then on the way here, she went um, after the border. It was like, we went, we're going straight into isolation for two weeks. And she, we stopped to get gas. Pump, she pumped the gas, no glove. And then she wanted to go through McDonald's drive-through, same hand, okay? 
eating First of all, I couldn't think straight because I was starving. I was starving. I, she's like, why don't you have the meal that I made? The meal she made was a boiled egg and a kind bar, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Those sorry. kind bars are like air. <laughs> There's like nothing to do them. I mean, I was, we were leaving New York during a pandemic. I'm sorry I didn't pack, you know, a, a gourmet meal, but I was like, these are some things that we could have on the road, um, which I thought was, you know, decent. But yeah, this one, forget it. She went to a McDonald's drive through I'm like, we're not supposed to stop anywhere non-essential. And I mostly like people have been, obviously everyone's been cooking a lot in quarantine, which I have been as well. And I've expanded my repertoire a lot, but it's not been like a pleasurable thing. It's just been like a defensive cooking so that <laughs> this one doesn't go out you know, unnecessarily and seek food elsewhere and bring COVID home, which is- But you know what? Your food has been amazing. You've been looking up all these like amazing recipes, using curries and coconut milk and- It's doing great. Oh, thank you. Nice save, Iman, nice save. Do you feel like maybe this is a mistake because now you're gonna always have to cook? I mean, she's requesting certain dishes that were quite uh, time consuming. <laughs> <laughs> when things get back to, like when things open, I shouldn't even say back to normal because it might be a long time. Because you like dining out and you love food so much, are you going to go out there even though people are serving you and like masks and gloves and no menus? Because things are opening up over here in Vancouver. And that was kind of the con new conditions is you go in and they have masks on, they have gloves on, no menus, no cash, no nothing. And to me, I was like, that just doesn't sound fun. Exactly. I love the dining experience so much of just like going out and getting the wine and the appies and that whole thing. So um, it's, yeah, I, I, now that I know Jess can cook, I just have that instead. <laughs> Until things get back to normal. I have to role play waitress and on the, for her wine. I've had different things on a menu for her. <laughs> I mean, you, you do great, though. I, do, Maybe I be, charge you extra for gloves. Guys, we don't know if we're going to go back to stand up, if that's going to ever happen. You have your new calling. Iman's, Iman's talking about going back to school and becoming a dermatologist. Seriously, yeah. we can't form anymore she loves gross skin stuff she i really just wants do to be like dr, dr. pimple popper <gasps> oh i just got a hair i mean fuck it yeah i got a haircut and she was like my barber's like i'm gonna do this because i'm your friend and she popped a zit on the back of my head i didn't even know you could get zits there so yeah i don't know why i shared that but go dr pimple popper i love that show so good. I mean, that's, you got to go one way or another. Like, I, I can't, I don't like to pop anything on anybody. I don't like to watch it, but I she think, She likes yeah. when I pop on her, though. Well, I don't mind. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> that's what those sticks are really for. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I guess I don't, I'm not, I don't switch in, in, when it comes to that, uh, popping. We stuff. have our roles, and it's, yeah. It's, it's there we, we have our roles when it comes to that. Wait, you did your barber come to your house or how did you? I know you were like, oh, I shouldn't even tell their story because it's probably oh, illegal. Care. I'm, I'm taking a page from Donald Trump and I'm being like, open it up. I'm picking Jenna up. I don't care who knows it. I'm done with this. I'm having people come on my window. I don't care. <laughs> like, we're done with it. So I went, I actually went to her house and um, she was very safe. I was the only one she saw. She has a little boy. Like, I've been quarantining for the most part. And so, you know, I needed my hair cut. I knew we had this interview coming up. <laughs> Flattered that because we didn't. Uh, well, I, mean, I got a haircut right before I went to Toronto to do my headlining weekend. And um, I, I felt I like, what a waste. The only person that could see my hair is my wife. Nobody else is seeing it. You know what I mean? I feel like a hijabi. Oh, please. I saw it on Facebook. That's the real reason you're wearing a hat, bitch. I saw what you did to those roofs. Oh, the dye job. That's completely different. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, yeah. Yeah. Can you see that, Jenna? Can you see the Kind roof? of. I, I was just so lucky that I got an appointment before I head back to Ontario where everything's closed. I got one in BC and I'm just so excited because never realize how many grades you have until quarantine <laughs> hits. I mean... But Iman, how did you choose red for the root? I don't get it. What happened? I only dye my hair with henna. And uh, the Indian store in Montreal near my parents' house was open. So I decided to go in and I just grabbed a couple of boxes, all the boxes that I could find, different colors. So there was like brown, red, black. I usually use black. Um, and I thought, whatever, let's experiment. Since it's henna, 
And that's what happens. I thought I'd get red all over, but it was just the roots. I, I, I pulled it through. The dog is eating the our, our weapon. Uh, <laughs> that's how dangerous it is. I don't know. <laughs> can see what's She's like, going you want to go dog now. Yeah. <laughs> Sharpening it for us. Um, yeah, she's she's definitely not a guard dog. I mean, she's so she would just um, she she would just leave, leave with whoever. she would just be she so excited to see them. Summit. She would just jump up and lick them. Yeah. Um, I did pull it all the way through your hair, but I it know, just didn't, but it didn't work. It My didn't hair's work. too black. I guess. Too black. Yeah. I have a root spray, but it washes out after a shampoo, and I I didn't get a chance to. I know I saw it on all the towels. The yeah. white towels. Wow. Okay, so hairstylist <laughs> is out if stand-up does not come back. That's not that's not a thing. It's interesting you said that because when this first hit, I was joking that stand-up might be like the new court jester. Like, you know, there's no court jesters anymore, and it's just a thing in the history books. Is that going to be stand-up comedians? Crazy. Oh. Hope not. Hope dress up as, as us for Halloween years down the road. <laughs> I was a, a stand-up comedian from the olden days. Right. But if well, you do have to find, yeah, sorry, go ahead, Jenna. Say, so even if clubs do open, they're going to have all these precautions, just like restaurants, just like everything else. And will right. it be fun? I'm a huge comedy club goer too. Like I enjoy, I sit in the audience and watch, but I couldn't imagine being sitting there with partitions up and less people in there, you know, it would just be oh, devastating. Yeah. No, I mean, it would be nuts because the whole point of stand-up is to be in like a dingy, small, Basement. everybody close together, the, the you know, the ceiling low, everything. Yeah. And I mean, so, yeah, people, the laughter close together, separating people. Yeah, it's not going to be, a, I don't know. It's not going to be ideal. I mean, our best best case scenario is a, is a vaccine and no permutations of this ever down the road, I guess. Right. <laughs> I don't know, but it's going to take, yeah, yeah. So if you do have to find another career, are you going to go back to being a war crimes lawyer, Jess? Oh, my God. That'd imagine. be a dream for me. I love United <laughs> Nations friends. They're actually the funniest people I know. And I'm that's like, not a joke. If anyone doesn't know that, Jess really used to be a war crimes lawyer. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I'm not even a member of the bar anymore. I'd really have to go. Well, I mean, I'd study alongside you. I'd, I'd need a major refresher. Um, but if you're studying, you know, in medical school to be a dermatologist. Although you made fun of me for wanting to become a doctor. Yeah. You, you well, think that I might have to go to the, like, Caribbean or something to get a medical degree. I did say that. <laughs> She well, doesn't she, think I could do it in North America. She didn't even finish undergrad. So I like, dropped out of university go back for and comedy. You'd, you'd have to go back and at least even start there. Um, it's not just like medical school. I it's know. a long road. I but support you, though. I'm, I if I'm you. a doctor in 15 years, it's still good. Yeah. And I'll work for a good 10, 15 years before retiring. Well, you know, that's, that's a far projection. But <laughs> I, I I don't know if I would go back. So I don't know if they would, if they would take me. I. I've, I've written too had, many things online. You had so, such a <laughs> year, too, celebrating 10 years in comedy. I know, I made doing a big the, deal out of being, Jimmy yeah. Fallon, The Tonight Show. Yeah. Uh, you stopped I stopped paying, paying my bar fees. fees, and I was like, see ya. I did The Tonight Show <laughs> 10 years. I'm definitely never going back to law. And then, you know. The pandemic hit. You should never say things like that. <laughs> <laughs> How did you make that switch? Is that what you were going to ask, Jenna? Yeah. Like, how do you uh, make the switch from, com from because I imagine you made g way better money at, as a lawyer than you did when you first started stand-up. Um, well, yeah, definitely. Uh, it was a lot of security and money lost. And there is a period of time where you're, like, not good at the old thing and you're also not yet good at the new thing. So you're in this, like, in-between thing for many years. That's very bad for your self-esteem if you derive it from your work um but i i mean i didn't i honestly i, I didn't there wasn't a major uh switch moment well you got to tell them what your plan was when you left well i was just gonna yeah i didn't also i didn't know anything about comedy so i didn't realize how long comedy takes as most people don't most people think they can do comedy as you so know. she thought within the year she'll take no, a year I off two, i was like i'll take two years off no big deal. I can, if I don't have an HBO special, I realize it's not for me and no harm, no foul. I'll, uh, I'll go back to law. 
<laughs> and then I, I got bitten by the bug, and um, and you know, and I, I, I thought I would originally it was in stand up. I was going to try to write a, a sitcom about um, a war crimes tribunal, which is still something in in the works. But um, I didn't realize how I didn't realize how long comedy takes and uh, how addicting it is. Really, live stand up. Anyway, so <laughs> I I never went back. They're very different crowds, I will say, audiences. What are the similarities between being a war crimes lawyer and a stand-up comedian? <laughs> oh, man. I mean, uh, you don't have bachelorette parties, you know? <laughs> <laughs> They're replaced with war criminals. War criminals are easier than bachelorette parties. <laughs> <laughs> don't Maybe insanity. <laughs> Sorry. Insanity is a, is a commonality there. <laughs> Crazy yeah. people. <laughs> yes. But, you know, one thing that I guess the one thing that what is kind of common is, I mean, this might be the friends I gravitated to in that world, but um, that kind of like dark sense of humor, the things that you can joke about amongst comedians that you realize you can't necessarily um, like at a regular dinner party, because it's I've definitely cracked a few jokes that were too dark um, and uh, <laughs> the mood. But with uh, my friends my war criminal, fr not my war criminal friends, my <laughs> war crimes lawyer friends, um, those guys, I mean, you could you could really laugh about anything with. So kind of similar sensibilities. It's definitely hilarious. Yeah. They're the funniest people I know are your work. Uh, yeah, Iman has like asked all of them to be her assistant. Yeah, I'm like, guys, do you want, I, I, yeah. I could come to United Nations, I could be your gopher, get you coffee, whatever. I just want to be surrounded by these people. They're so funny. They're very funny. Well, maybe that would be a good sitcom. I was going to say, forget the war crimes sitcom and and write the Al Solomons that you were telling me about at the club. And Jenna, after seeing the special, don't you think they could have a sitcom? Easily. I oh, mean, the storyline, the plot in itself. <laughs> we're gonna we're we're working on that as well. Um, it's just it, it's hard because Iman spends a lot of time tanning, um, and so it's hard to get her to sit down. <laughs> we did today. I got work done today, and then I went to tan. How do you do it all? I don't know. But I just wanted to bring that up on record because I don't know if you remember, you promised I could be your sexy butler um, last time yeah. I saw you. So now everybody knows that. Okay. <laughs> so do you have any crazy stories? So Jess, was when was this? A year ago you were on The Tonight Show, I guess. Yeah. About a year. Um, so you have no idea how jealous I was. And all of us were so proud of you and jealous at the same time. Um, you did a great job. You can watch it on YouTube. Leather jacket was fabulous. Do you have any crazy stories from backstage? Because that's what everybody want, thinks about. What is it really like? Are people bitchy? What did they feed you? Oh, it's so good. Backstage was epic. It was It was so really good. like everything you hope that experience to be. Um, just being in 30 Rock, the page that's assigned to you. Like, it's really out of, you know, like the car that came to get me and like, and you were with me and like a couple of the my car, friends. The, the car alone was there like three hours before. Just waiting outside time. my apartment building, like a huge like Escalade type thing. And then when we get to 30 Rock, the like security comes out of the car and like stops people on the sidewalk to like make room for us to go into the building. And of course, there's like a lot of tourists. So people think like, "Ooh, it's like someone from SNL. Who is it? Who is it? They're taking pictures. And we're like, Sorry. Like, uh, don't even worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> so that was pretty cool. And then the, the way that the dressing rooms are there is so cool. It's all, each one has a different theme. Um, and we were in like the kind of Cuban, Cuban room. Like kind of had a Cuban cigar type of uh, vibe to it. And you can ask what for whatever you want backstage. So, um, why did they give you the Cuban room? Is it because Imam was with you? Like, what did they think? Oh, were they want Cuban? <laughs> the Latino uh, I know. background. My mom did come backstage. My mom and sister and Iman were backstage. And then I had a bunch of friends that flew in, uh, which was amazing that were in the audience. Uh, my mom is from Peru. So that's kind of, uh, kind of close, I guess. Um, Jane Goodall was on the show and she was in like the jungle room and I got a photo with her and it looks so funny because it looks like she's like, we're kind of in a jungle like setting, which was perfect. Um, but the big, I guess the big celeb thing was um, they were taping two episodes my day because mine aired on the Friday, which was Passover and Easter. So mine aired on the Friday and it, we taped it on a Monday and the episode before ours that aired that Monday night was uh, Cher 
and she she was from there was like a promoting thing for her Broadway show. So there were all of these like shares walking around. So there was like young share, medium share, old share, and real share. And um, and so everybody was sort of beside themselves because she so I, like, I, obviously major. I, I don't, I didn't care about her before then. Like I'm a huge, I know, I know. I'm a huge Madonna fan and I know and respect Cher, but you know, I'm like, I'm a Madonna, Madonna fan. And I wanted to hang out with my wife before she had to go out there. So the booker that booked Jess on, on The Tonight Show was just like, Iman, why don't you come with me to watch Cher rehearse? And I'm like, nah, I'm good. He's like, come with me. Don't be stupid. This <laughs> I is was shaking my makeup down. I'm like, so I, I just want to see my wife. And he's like, he's like, come, come on. to watch like side stage. And Iman was like, why to stay with me? And <laughs> him and I were both like, no, go, you know? But literally, so now I'm like watching her and she is beyond perfect. Her body, her, her Incredible. energy, her presence. I started crying when she was performing. You got That's weak. how like I got weak. I couldn't you feel didn't my hair and then you were like I was in like, her presence and then you I were I was so embarrassed that your the booker would see me. I was just, literally I'm like this is too much <laughs> being in her presence. I was crying. I actually cried. She's unbelievable. Did yeah. you meet her? No. You didn't get to meet her? You no, know, we weren't allowed to meet her necessarily, but there was like we were allowed to stand in the hallway when she walked by on the way out. And so everyone was sort of that worked there too. Everyone wanted to like get a glimpse, you know? So I was standing outside of the, like in the doorway of my Cuban dressing room. Everybody was pretending to be busy doing something else. But but everyone was like all in the, like lining the hallway for when she walked through. Yeah. Except for the other woman that was on the show. It was Jane Goodall, myself, and this model who has- From Toronto. uh, Winnie Harlow. Oh, Winnie Harlow Harlow that has, um, what's that? Yeah, the skin condition or whatever. I know exactly who you're talking about. So she had her own photographer with her, and she wasn't shy to just go up and, uh, and in the hallway and ask Cher for a picture with her own personal photographer. Um, so, But I, I definitely didn't do that. But I did something very embarrassing, which thankfully no one can ever hear me because I don't have a very loud voice, so I don't think Cher heard. But um, as she walked by and we were standing in front of the dressing room, she walks by and um, we both make eye contact with her. I really couldn't feel my And name. then, and I was like, good job. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, like she needs to hear this. But she like, did sort of do this to us. Like, like the head, but, the head yeah, nod, but like, know? I mean, good job. Like, oh, thank, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. To, like, you know, like, yeah, obviously good job. But yeah, anyway. I'm, I, it, it was such so, so soft spoken that I'm sure she didn't hear anything, but I felt she's beyond that was, I, could, you were, I couldn't believe I, I couldn't believe I said that. Yeah. Cause the sun is like, it's well, that's the comic in you coming out. Like, that's what we say, right. To each other. Even if you suck. Oh, good job. Good set. You know, reflex and like, not the thing that you necessarily like you say to share. Yeah. Anyway. Did but you make amazing. Sorry. She's amazing. She's wow. her, and I know she's had plastic surgery, but oh my God, so at seven years old, she's beyond perfect. And as, again, as a Madonna fan, who's like, she's ruined her face completely with plastic surgery. Cher looks incredible. So Iman, only- it sounds like you may have switched there as the balance oh. shifted. I, I adore her. I mean, so much respect. And they don't make stars like that anymore. They you know what I mean? She's them iconic. Like they, used to. they really, it's not, you don't, you know, you see younger stars like that on the street. Like, it's not it's not the same. It's not the same as freaking Cher. It's like, see, when I saw Prince before he died, I saw him in a small venue in Montreal and Madison Square Garden, like, a year before he died. I mean, these guys, you know, it's not the same thing. But she's really right, spe- wish, I'm definitely a fan now. And with Cher as a woman, too, it's very hard to stay so relevant and so iconic and still such a beauty icon throughout all those years and to still do it. And she, I think she looks great too. She really does. She's incredible. really, really incredible. That what was about enough. Jimmy? Was he, what was he like? <laughs> he was really like the ideal person that you want in that, in that scenario. Because like I had, what was something else with the booker, Michael Cox was so great at, preparing me and um he like he allowed he asked me if I wanted to, because I was in New York he was like do you want to go and see someone else tape a set so you can see what it looks like and how the room is and the whole 
process. And I was like, yes, absolutely. That would like help calm my nerves a lot. And so I went to go see Nate Bargatze do his set, but he's like done it like seven times or something. So I watched and I saw Jimmy Fallon. Um, I, I was at our thing going off. I, I saw uh, Jimmy Fallon, like he was like, basically gave him such a warm introduction and pumped up the crowd for him. But I'm like, but of course, like they're probably friends. Um, but then when it was my time, I was, I was backstage behind the curtain and he was, he was there on stage. He's the one pumping up the crowd. He's the one, you know, introducing you. And he's like, you know, guys, like, you know, it's her first time, whatever, like promoting my album. Her friends are here. Her mom is here. Give it up for her mom. Like just getting them, you know, and he's, and he's there and he's, and he's laughing, you know, he's such an easy laugher and all the, you know, things that I like might have in the past, like, you know, made fun of him, like other people, um, in terms of like, you know, what an easy laugher he is or like what, you know, him rustling up Trump's hair and whatever and being like, oh God, this guy, you know, um, is probably dangerously upholding the status quo or whatever. But when it's your turn, you're like, oh my God, thank God it's this guy. He's so sweet. He's just, that's who he is. He's just like, he's just a host. He's like a very, he's just a wonderful host and just genuinely loves people and, and he came backstage he before came backstage. everything to he, just like talk to us and tell us how much he loves montreal and the oh, poutine yeah. and yeah he was I like was, i wouldn't make fun of poutine i know a lot of people do when they come to montreal but i i have too much respect for poutine to make fun of it <laughs> and, you know he, he was, was really so cute and, and i'm like taking pictures of both of them so i'm like you guys sit on the couch and go crazy and he was just like game he's so game for you know? everything and you this know? is after taping the whole episode with share which by the way the, they had a lot of, you know, she wanted a lot of retakes and stuff because um, she's oh. Cher. So, no, like, you know, they, they, it's whatever, a different level of thing. And um, he was so, so, so wonderful. And also I should mention, like, he's there. Like a lot of the late night hosts are not there. Like Colbert isn't there. How, um, I mean, I hate people that. People don't know And that. I love Colbert. I always said if I do a Tonight Show, I would want it to be, or a Late Show, rather, I would want it to be Colbert, but now no, like, he's he a, doesn't he's even amazing. sit there. Colbert's obviously amazing, well, but he... What do you so, mean he doesn't sit there? So, so they what they do is they, they, yeah, they, what they've been doing now for a while is they'll, they'll record a bunch of stand-up sets, like back-to-back, -back, different stand-ups. Yeah. And then just, like, so your show is, like, your stand-up set is you're on a show with a bunch of other stand-ups, uh, let's say five or something, yeah. maybe six, and then they cut your set and like Steven throws to it at some other point in the next like five, six months or something. How horrible so is that? It's, I mean, it's still, I it's still, still really do, cool, I still but I, I would want him to be there. But it's not like necessarily how it, it's not the experience of um, that we had. Oh, and then the like the Roots, who I'm a big fan of, and you know they come backstage and you sign their um, their Drum drumsticks. Stick. And like anyway, so that that is another cool thing. Is like I, I really like the Roots. So. Yeah, but I feel like Jimmy doesn't have a choice because of how Johnny Carson set that up, and we all know the iconic story of Joan Rivers being called over and Ellen DeGeneres being called over, and that's the Tonight Show thing. So if the host isn't there then exactly. that's not going to happen. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I think that they, uh, there is some calling over here and there. It's not like as common. Not that it was so common, but it's... Um, and it's not like it means what it used to. It's not no, the same. Right. Yeah, there's yeah. too many now. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, in that sense, um, he Jimmy Fallon is like, he was so sweet. And I'm a huge, now I'm like, forget it. I'm a huge fan. <laughs> well, that's a huge rite of passage as a stand-up. Like, I mean, oh my God. How has your career changed? Was that like a turning point for you? Because you already uh, have an album. Like, you're already established and working. But have you noticed a huge jump? I mean, it didn't, it doesn't change everything. Like, I mean, I think it might have back at a certain point, you know, in history. But um, it definitely... It opened. It opened doors. some door. Yeah, I mean, it, it, in terms of bookings and getting on shows, there were definitely shows that I didn't wasn't getting responses from before. Uh, but it's not like, uh, yeah, and, and and like a few good things happened. I mean, it was kind of, it's kind of hard to separate that from the stuff that happened with us together. But you know, getting I didn't get a manager immediately after that, but then eventually, like together, we did for our stuff and individually. Obviously, but I'm a lot more, more important than to the Tonight Show. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's why. That's what you're yeah, saying. I said, <laughs> yeah, yeah, because of my wife. Uh, <laughs> I'll no, but that's what's funny now. When people are asking it, when we perform together, they're like, "What's your bio?" I'm like, "One of them did the Tonight Show." <laughs> As you know, well, in the U.S., um, yeah. people, I guess, I don't know, all know Just for Laughs, but um, yeah, it, it definitely helped. It was a little bump, but it wasn't like um, a life a life changing thing necessarily. I was just like so excited that I was able to stay in my own body during the whole thing because there's been so many like lesser shows and moments where I've had that out of body thing where your mouth is going and you're saying your jokes, but you're like kind of like whoa am I doing this right now like you know you're not like in in it and um I I was I definitely had the moment back behind the curtain like in those few seconds where I was like this could be and honestly in retrospect very realistic this could be the height of everything this could be the pinnacle these things don't you know who knows with this career this could be the high point and if that's the case I want to like fully just like enjoy it and um and I was so happy that I was able to like stay in my body and just like in, really have fun and, and enjoy that moment. Cause there's so many times backstage where, before something big where people are like, just have fun out there. And you're like, yeah, it's gonna be great. You know? And you're like, it's not, you just want it to be over and have gone well. And this time I was actually like able to enjoy those few minutes and um, it was so great, yeah. Did you enjoy the free access to snacks? Did you make any diva demands? What did we ask for? I definitely wine. asked for wine for my mother because I know that's her, what she drinks. So I was like, red wine. I wanted her to be relaxed. I mean, that was like one of the things that the booker did that was like, seemed so brutal in the moment, but in retrospect was like such a good thing. Which, I could have killed her. During the sound check, um, you know, with like, at just for laughs or like a TV set, normally you just do your like first line. You go see where the mark is on the stage. You do your first line, your, maybe your closing line or like your biggest, loudest movement for the camera people. Um, but he wanted me to do my full set and he sat at the desk and, um, it was just the camera people and he invited my mother and my sister and my mother's like a pretty intimidating person who I hadn't, who hadn't seen me do stand up since like the beginning because, and it was always terrible when she came and she was very excited. She told all of her friends cause this was a big deal and something legitimizing that she could say about her daughter in comedy. But like the night before, she already started with like, well, I hope you're wearing something flattering. My friends are watching. What are you saying about Israel? You know, so and now she doesn't know what I, my set. So now, so Iman tried to stop it from happening. I'm like, God are you bless. crazy? Do not make her do her set in front of her mother and just sister. Just for my mother, Five my sister minutes? and like two camera people or three camera And he's people. like, come on, come in the room. That was our first like argument. Yes, yeah, like, she's no, I'm not him. She's like, I don't care for share, and I will not let you, my wife, do this. <laughs> no wonder you keep her around. <laughs> she's so she's such a protector. I honestly have to be careful to like tell Iman about like any mild like slight in comedy or on Facebook, because the next thing I know, she's like fully blocked the person. I'm like, it, 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 I'm not even saying it like a big deal. I'm just like sharing some random stupid thing, you know, someone said, and then she's like, they're once, a sworn enemy. I'm, I, I can't was, tell her, like, necessarily stuff. Well, once was, like, this guy who was, like, never liking your status updates, but liking somebody else's status updates. And you're like, I feel like he's doing it on purpose. And I'm like, well, I unfriended him. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, no. Anyway, but <laughs> all that to say that the set just for my mother and my sister and the two camera people was actually uh, went my mom seemed to like it, like the camera people laughed. And just, and then by the time I went and had an audience and Jimmy Fallon, you know, it was, it seemed like less uh, hard than Good. just done. So strategically, psychologically, it was, it was really smart to make me do that. It's true. I was wrong. I can't <laughs> believe I was you wrong. You were wrong about that too. <laughs> share. Share when, add that. When you lost control of I your body. I guess he knows what he's doing. I guess, I guess, I guess the Tonight Show booker knows what I he's doing. I guess he knows what he's doing. <laughs> Did you, um, Oh, frig. Did you read the comments after? Because I don't care how good you are. You know, it's trolls that live on the internet. I didn't read the comments on yours, but I'm just curious if you, did you dig into that or? Oh, oh yeah. My God. Well, you know, um, interesting, no like negative comments on my appearance. Some people thought I looked like Tina Fey or, you know, like things that were flattering like that. Um, a lot of people thought I didn't have confidence and, or, or like recommended just watching the video with only the with without my voice just with just with the the, the text tap. 
<laughs> They're like, it's better if you turn off the volume. <laughs> Well, then, you know, you have a future as a writer, if nothing else works. <laughs> That's what you're saying, I think. Uh, but I was like, my persona is this. I don't, I never have confidence. It's not just like right now. Like, this is actually a lot of confidence, what you're seeing. Um, but uh, the best was the next, I was watching like someone set like the next one they posted or maybe two people after me and I was, I was, I watched their set and then I was like, I glanced at the, their comments. Usually, you know, if it's a man, it's like generally much more flattering. There's not all the like women suck and women aren't funny. And there's always like 50% of the comments are that, which I don't even bother me. Well, if uh, it's a straight white man, we should say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, but and there's sometimes there's like, ooh, like, I hope she was better at law kind of thing, comment. <laughs> <laughs> um, even, I kind of even joke about that in my set. But um, no, so a couple comedians later, I, I glanced at the comments and they were like, oh, thank God it's not that Canadian woman. Or like, it was like, there was like a mean comment about me, like Whatever. two weeks later. And I was like, I'm not even looking at my own comments. Like, how is this here? <laughs> as long as they're talking. How do you guys deal with, like, obviously you're going to get some hate back on the internet. It's part of your special. At the end, you guys read all those comments, which is one of my favorite parts of the special, because I love it when you just face them, because you break it down and you laugh about it. But how do you deal with it, especially you, Iman, because you say you're a bit more protective. Uh, I mean, I find it entertaining, um, usually. I it's usually really funny. I don't like when anybody says anything bad about her, but I did laugh really at that um Turn watch it, it with the sound off yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> it really depends on what the insult is but yeah i think just like facing it and reading it out loud and the reason that we included it in our special it's just like when you read it out loud it sounds so ridiculous like it's just it really takes away from anything hurtful in my opinion and believe me i'm like when i did um uh, I just for laughs gala and I had like a bunch of comments oh, on, I mean, Instagram. on Instagram. Oh, it was nonstop. I think I, well, a lot of her comments specifically are don't call yourself a Muslim. If you're a lesbian, like you're a bad, a terrible example. Yeah, for Islam. Sure. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so I, I, I guess I'm used to it. I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't bother me as much, but I did get into like a lot of arguments. The problem is, is that I will, engage with those people no she will go and i'm like you <laughs> it doesn't look great for you to be like you know fighting with these viewers be, but... yeah fighting with people on the just for laughs account you know they huh. it, you know um no i got embarrassed because one of the guys i argued with for like a lot of comment backs and back and forth she, like she a lot of and he it's was not like, like one quick thing and she's out <laughs> yeah no i like really stay on it and i found out like towards the end i was like oh shit he's like 16 years old i can't believe i wasted <laughs> two and a half hours arguing with this guy <laughs> i mean the best though is like i've gone to see a couple comments i wanted to see if there was like any new ones we could use and i i went on um we had we did like PBS and News Hour. They did a profile on us with some clips of stand up and some like interview on the side, and it was a really good thing. It, it, they did a nice job, and um and then I just noticed like on YouTube, I went to go see if there were any juicy comments, and it was like comments have been disabled. Huh. And then when <laughs> when just for last put a clip of us, also. also the comments were disabled, but like they're not disabled for anybody else. So I'm like, how bad were these comments? Well, just for last, probably disabled it because of me. They're like, oh no, that's <laughs> not gonna get into it with these people. <laughs> One of the things uh, that I admire about you guys is that you decided to become a duo, which is so rare in comedy because we're all so selfish and fame obsessed. Because you know, when I think about a boyfriend, I want him not in the spotlight at all. I want it to be like a librarian or something and leave me to have all the attention. How long into your relationship? You think I'm joking. I'm dead serious. How I know you're not joking, Jesse. <laughs> no, no, it's I fair. know. <laughs> How long into your relationship did you guys like realize, hey, maybe we have something together? I mean, we didn't like, want it. A year and a half ago. Yeah. So, and we've well, been together almost 10 years. Yeah. So. I mean, first of all, there were four years that we were together, but nobody knew. So those four years, we each like developed on our own as comedians. So let's say I met Iman, I started comedy two years later. Yeah. 
And then for the first two years of stand up for me, we, we were just sort of, we were friends on the scene. There was nothing. And then four years of um, like secretly closeted um, dating. So that was, so the first six years I didn't have, I just was a stand up on my own effectively. And then once we, once we moved to New York and we got engaged, that's when we came out in comedy about our relationship and started each doing jokes about each other. And after enough joking about each other and there being like kind of some mirror stuff, it was, it was really other people that wanted to see us on stage together. We weren't like jumping at that idea of working to no. No, nobody still, wants to work with their partner. It's still it's not. Uh, our well, it was terrible <laughs> at the beginning. It was terrible at the beginning. Now it's good. It's just that you, I it's mean, adjusting to the night. Like when we got to Montreal, like a couple days before the Crave special. Yeah. I mean, we had such a blowout. We got separate. I had to get another hotel room. I like, got the you other, got the hotel, other room. hotel room. It was. Oh, that's juicy! But it's like you knew neither of you was going to cancel this taping, so yeah, we were yeah. really stuck. Yeah. And I was like, let's just get through this, and then we never have to do this again. Um, I'd rather save, even if it's like the thing we make the most money with in comedy right now is like, you know, getting booked and brought places as a duo to host stuff or perform. Like I, I'd rather save my marriage than do this if it's gonna right if it's gonna end. I mean, although we've always said if we if we if we do get divorced, we'll be in the closet about that to keep the <laughs> for at least four years. Yeah, yeah that's exactly. the limit. Yeah. Okay, exactly. but what was the fight about? You have to tell us. I don't remember. I mean, she's like a control freak and is very bossy. And uh... wow, <laughs> uh oh, we're about to start another one, Jenna. And I'm just, we're, we're complete. she's like very, you know, alpha and I'm not even a letter. Like I'm so easygoing. And the reason I'm in stand up is because I could be my own boss. It's not and an alpha, it's type A is. Type A, what yeah. is it? Alpha, <laughs> female, I don't know. Whatever it is. <laughs> I don't know what it is. But uh, yeah, and I'm really easygoing and I like to go, you know, up, do my own thing and now I have this person telling me what to do and how to do it. And I just, it drove me nuts. So I'm a bitch. She and drives me nuts. really cool. Exactly. Uh, That's basically. <laughs> and she just yeah. wants the tan. <laughs> she just wants the tan. No, but it's just, yeah, I, a lot of the fights at the beginning were about like, you know, I'm like, well, you, why didn't you send this? It's not like the on stage stuff. Cause like it, we both have confidence in each other as a comedian and like in the performance, it's all the, like the back end, like, back end like what am I talking about like it's the database it's the software no but like you know she to this day has no idea what the password is for our website like she has never updated that thing you know um like or I'm like well why didn't you I'm like well no why didn't you send that email but in all fairness and she's like I've been busy I'm like I see you all day you're not busy it, like <laughs> no you got to tell them too that you you are such a control freak so even if i were to update the website you would go in there and change everything that i do so why do it twice when you could just do it yourself so we've decided that i'll just take care of that stuff and then no resentment builds up and then and it's you, like and she does folding so many, our clothes and she does so it's many the other... same thing it's like i fold them and she refolds them you should see what she does mm -hmm. in our closet like rehangs everything that i hung certain thing i don't want to do this twice you know mm -hmm. you just do it you have your strong your, your strengths and i have mine you see jenna it's not so bad quarantining by yourself no <laughs> <laughs> not so bad tips for those who want to work together new couples because there's going to be a lot of people that i think are going to adventure down new career paths uh, maybe get business with their lovers do you have any advice for them i mean it's been so much fun watching these comedy couples that normally don't comedy couple having to do work together and put you know putting stuff out together it's very the vibe is very much like welcome to our world bitches you know like we've been doing this it's and um, I don't know. I think like the thing that uh, kind of worked is that I'm like, okay, well, if in our work world, like I do these things, um, then Iman takes care of so many other things in our life, and you know, list them all one by one. Oh, no. we don't have long enough. <laughs> We're getting to the end of the program. <laughs> but it's very exciting, and you know, there's all these people like to Jenna's point that 
think they can be stand-ups and after the pandemic are going to be like, oh, bucket list, like, I'm just going to go for it. And I'm not worried about that because I think what? the cream will rise to the top. After this, do you think? I've seen a couple statuses being like, you know what, after this, I don't want to hold back anymore. If there's something you want to do, do it. And stand-up has come up on a couple straight guy statuses I've seen. And I just think, good luck, honey, because <laughs> I don't think it's going to be good. <laughs> the time not to be think like I think everyone in stand-up is like uh I, how do I pivot to YouTube star <laughs> yeah kind of which is great when you have a podcast yeah. and also but maybe that'll set the comedians like apart maybe their top will survive and the meh won't yeah there's going to be less venues that survive there's going to be less spots and um and probably at the beginning they're going to need to make money back so they're going to be booking people with significant followings that also buy a lot of alcohol so not lesbian well <laughs> so maybe this is a great time to jump on that sitcom which if you think about stand-ups right all the good actors are like tv hosts started as stand-ups my ex-boyfriend texted me saying, oh, my God, did you know Jenny Jones started as a stand-up? And I was like, yeah, everybody does. So it doesn't matter, like, where you start. I feel like stand-up is sort of the, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, the baseline for entertainment. And then they pick people out of stand-up for other things. That's why I started stand-up, because I couldn't make it as an actor too gay. I wasn't getting any hosting jobs. So I'm like, fuck this. I'm going to become a stand-up. Still, yeah. still on my couch, but you know, <laughs> we're working on it. Yeah, it's a good time to be doing all like, yeah, the working on the writing projects for sure. We're doing, we're doing that in between tanning. Um, <laughs> yeah, for us, like honestly, stand up is definitely our main thing in that we don't, we can't sing or dance and acting. We haven't necessarily. I mean, we tried, it's, but barely, you know, you know, we, we, we saw auditions here and there, but you did. Well, I, I got an audition. It's actually so funny. This is how bad I am at acting <laughs> that the audition basically called for my personality. They were just like a cool, um, a cool, feisty Palestinian woman it married was like to a Jewish you. person. <laughs> and the, 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 uh, the writer, the director of the play was like, you have to play this role. I wrote this role with you in mind. And I was so bad at the reading that she's like, I really like you, but I'm going to give you a non-speaking role. <laughs> this is so bad that I couldn't even play myself, you guys. They covered her in a full like hijab, almost like a version. Yeah. yeah. I was somebody's mother. Mother and wrapped up and you didn't say anything. I didn't say anything, but I got the biggest laugh of the night, remember? Because you took a big bow. I did. By yourself, <laughs> like you were the star. When everyone <laughs> together. I love it. <laughs> well, everybody, do you guys have, you have, so you have your, let's, pl let's start plugging stuff because we got to wrap this shit up. So um, you have individual socials, but you also have the L Solomon social. What's that yeah. handle? Is it the L Solomon's? I don't yes, know, what is it? You might, I'm going to murder you in the woods. <laughs> At the L Solomons, E-L-S-A-L-O-M-O-N-S. -S -S. And our individual handles are there as well. Iman Al Husseini, Jess underscore Solomon, S-A-L. And um, even Esther has oh, an Instagram. Esther, Esther, Esther Al Husseini has her own Insta. But the L. Solomons, uh, we put out a new cartoon and we have an amazing illustrator named Jesse Brown. He lives in London and we put new cartoons every week. Um, He's another reason we're staying together. Yeah. I love illustrator. those. They're like comic strips and they're so funny. They're, thank you. Yeah, and you can scroll back. There's like, we've been doing it for like at least two years, if not more, every week. So there's tons of cartoons. And hopefully we'll, we're working on a graphic novel. We'll see with Jesse. We'll see. Fingers crossed. Oh, exciting stuff. And in the meantime, watch their Crave special, the Al Solomon's A Marriage of Convenience. I feel like that's not true. <laughs> they explain it, but I do have one question for you. Did you ever hear from the couple in that special, the ones you guys made sit together and fall in love? Yeah, one of well, them was closeted, and she almost I mean, ruined the whole thing. Yeah, she was uh, the one that wasn't out. Um, she really came hard at us in on social media, like in our DMs, and then went after Belle and JFL, Who and everyone got nervous. The fuck sits in the front row of a comedy show when you're in the closet? I've been in the closet. You sit in the back. You don't make a noise. <laughs> I'll give you tips on 
being on, in the closet. You don't sit in the front and tell everybody with cameras all over the place that you're queer. I yeah, mean, that's, we asked her how she identified. It wasn't a gotcha thing, and she decided on camera to say, I mean, you know, these things, I feel like these people don't, I, I think many people don't know, like, how much work it takes. I mean, we practically got a divorce on the way to the special. <laughs> to And we only had one taping, and it was very much towards the end. And But we, we have this element of the, to, for people that haven't seen it, there's a date. We set up a Muslim and a Jew. It's all improvised. We find people in the crowd. And um, in the end, we had to disguise their identities um, to keep that, like, 15 minutes, which is really such a fun part of the special because it is, like, the one improvised element and it goes against the whole point which is bringing people together to have to disguise their identities but we we didn't have any choice um i we haven't heard from her since then well i blocked her on everything i guess so. we blocked her <laughs> i if she ever comes out we'll uh we'll go after. well her. that's what i'm so upset it's like <laughs> what are you gonna come out in like six months and just like put us through hell with, with it was really uh it was really shitty yeah this could have yeah. been yeah. it was, oh, it was oh. no surprise she turned out to be a cat person <laughs> <laughs> right Ooh, I can't, I can't but when you I do know. improvise spit oh, it's like I've seen that bit in Ottawa a couple times and you never sometimes it really works and other times it's a little awkward because you don't know who you're gonna get you don't oh, sure yeah and in this case it was like actually perfect because it was a Jewish woman and it was and she turned out to be Muslim and Palestinian embarrassing my people <laughs> it's always funny when it's like, it's so much worse when it's one of your people. Like, Iman was more angry. I mean, I was pretty upset, but like, when if it was a Jewish person, I would have lost my mind a lot more. But like, because it's like one of her people, she's the one that's more pissed, you know? You're like, ah, oh, like you take it more personally, like as an embarrassment. I well, guess. yeah, we already have a bad reputation. She's making it worse. <laughs> <laughs> it was an interesting twist, though. I enjoyed it. <laughs> I feel like special. Unexpected. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a great plug. Now everyone's going to go watch it. If, just fast forward to the end if you want to see that scene, I guess. Yeah, it's but it's pretty dramatic because she's she says I'm not out and it's not and her and it's not followed by and I'm coming out tonight on this special. Yeah, like what right. a missed opportunity. She could have gone viral. She could have been famous. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. All right. I love you too. Thanks love for doing too. this. Thanks, Thanks for, for having, having us, us, you guys. Yeah. You're awesome, both of you. Safe travels from Vancouver to uh, Ottawa. Thank you. Thank you very much. Keep those sticks sharpened and by your door. <laughs> oh my the God. dog is The so dog true. is fully going <laughs> crazy right now on the sticks. After <laughs> she knows what's up. And hey, if those rednecks come back, give them my number. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, guys. Have a great night. Cheers.